This is a Dell Latitude 5530. Looks like it's switched off, doesn't it? However, if I provide some light for my torch, you can see the outline of the Windows desktop background. So it's pretty clear that we have some sort of failure of the backlight LEDs here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the screen and we're going to troubleshoot. I removed the screen from the laptop and scanned in the board so that we can all have a look at it together. Just one thing I did before starting troubleshooting, I plugged in a spare screen into the Dell Latitude 5530 and confirmed that the backlight came on on that spare screen. So there's definitely no issue with the motherboard, there's an issue with the backlight circuit on this screen. We're going to start our troubleshooting at this 30 pin EDP connection right here, so let's zoom in. Now I found a pin out for this 30 pin connection, so let's mark in those pins. So what pins are we concerned with when we're trying to troubleshoot the backlight? Well, first of all, we are concerned with BL underscore power, which comes in on these four pins here. This is the power for the backlight. We are also concerned with the BL underscore PWM, PWM being pulse width modulation. This is for the brightness to tell us how bright the backlight should be. And the BL underscore enable pin here, which tells us whether the backlight should be switched on or off. So what we're going to do next is plug in our EDP cable, introduce our multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range and start taking some measurements at those pins. So with my black probe on ground I want to measure at the BL power pins. So I place my red probe to the BL power pins and I find that it measures 18.9 volts. Next I want to measure the BL underscore PWM. So I very carefully place my red probe to the BL underscore PWM and I find that it measures 3.10 volts. And next I place my red probe to the BL underscore enable pin and I find that it also measures 3.10 volts. So everything looks okay at this point. We have our three input signals and they are reading the correct voltages. So what I need to do next is to find the IC that takes our BL underscore power input, boosts it to a higher voltage and drives our LED backlight. This IC is a BOE B8021R. Now this is responsible for taking our BL underscore power, increasing it to a higher voltage and driving our LED backlights. So what we need to do is to check that this is getting the correct input, that it's producing the correct output, and then check our LED strips to make sure there's no issue with those either. Now unfortunately I was unable to find a pinout configuration for this BOE B8021R IC. You know how I normally like to draw these out because I think it helps us to show more clearly what's going on. However, we can work away without a schematic. Let me show you what I think is going on here. Our BL power comes in at this position right here. It then comes through this fuse where it is then described as VLED in. After the inductor, which is switched on and off by this IC, our voltage comes out then through this diode here, through this fuse where it is described then as VLED out. This VLED out is our boosted DC voltage which is used to power our LED backlights. So that's fed down to these three pins here. Now if I mark out the pinouts on that cable, you will see that our VLED out goes down through this cable to four separate LED backlight strips. Each of these four LED backlight strips has its own path to ground through the IC. So as you can see here we have LED backlight strip 1 has a path to ground through the IC on this path here. The second backlight has a path through here. The third one has a path through here. And the fourth has a path through here. Now one of the things that can go wrong with these screens, with the backlight on these screens, is that a strip of these LEDs can fail or a single LED can fail. So we can test each of these individually by bringing a positive voltage here 
which is feeding down through here and then grounding each of these LED strips one by one. Let me just quickly show you how I did that. To test each of those four LED strips, the first thing I do is disconnect my EDP cable just to make sure that there's no other power going to the board. I then introduce my own DC power supply. I connect my red wire to VLED out and I connect my black wire to the grounding of the first LED strip. Now I was unsure what voltage is meant to be on VLED out. So I started at 24 volts and brought it up in increments of 1 volt and what I found was when I set it to 28 volts with a current limit of 10 milliamps it started drawing 27.25 volts and 0 0.007 of an amp or 7 milliamps and the backlight strip lit up. Next I tested the second LED strip and I found that they also lit up and drew 7 milliamps at 27.25 volts. So the second strip is also working. The third strip of LEDs also draws 0 0.007 amps at 27.25 volts and lights up. And lastly we connect up the fourth strip of LEDs and surprise surprise it draws 0 0.007 amps or 7 milliamps at 27.25 volts. So from what I'm reading here the four strips of LEDs are all working. Now I'm a little bit surprised by this because a lot of the time when I've been working on this it has been the strips of LEDs that have failed and as anybody who's ever owned a TV knows usually the first thing to go is the backlight so that you have sound and no picture but in this case the LED strips are all fine. So if there's nothing wrong with our LED strips then there must be something wrong with the power going to it surely right? Well let's check along that path that we marked out earlier and see what voltages we're getting at each position. So first of all I introduce my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground which I'm just finding on the other side of that capacitor and we're going to start taking some measurements. First measuring at our input fuse I place my red probe to the near side and I find that it measures 18.90 volts. So that's our backlight power and that's good to the fuse. However, on the other side of that fuse, I've tried to measure for our same 18.9 volts and I'm getting nothing there. So that fuse is blown. So the question as always when a fuse is blown, did the fuse just wear out or get hit by you know, a temporary surge that took it out? Or is there a problem that's causing the fuse to blow? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for a short on the other side of that fuse before replacing it. At this point I disconnected the EDP cable so that there's no power going to this board at all. I introduced my multimeter in diode mode so we can take diode mode measurements. I place my red probe to ground this time and I place my black probe to the other side of that blown fuse. And when I do I find that it measures 0 0.001. So we do in fact have a short at that position. So if we're reading a short at this position here, then what components could possibly be the cause of that short? Well, obviously we're looking first of all at these three capacitors right here. Now, if you look at these closely, it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with them. These two are different colors, but I'm not sure that really means anything. But what other components could it be? Well, this resistor here is also on that same track. This inductor carries the voltage across, so the IC could also be shorted. However, on the balance, um, it's usually the capacitors, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove all three of these capacitors and see if that takes away the short. So I first removed the middle capacitor, which was the one that was most discolored. The first capacitor I removed measured fine, it wasn't shorted, so I decided to take off the second one, the little one. With both of those capacitors removed, I was still measuring a short at that fuse. So I decided to take off the third one. And it was in fact that third capacitor that was shorted. Okay, so how do we go about putting this back together again? 
Well, I have put back in place the two capacitors that were measuring good. I have obviously left out the one that was shorted and we know that this fuse is blown. So what we need to do is take out that fuse and I'm going to temporarily replace it with a piece of fuse wire. Um, I have measured these capacitors in case we want to replace them. This is a 9.58 microfarad and this is a 108 nanofarad and it's likely that the one we've removed is also a 9.58 or 10 microfarad capacitor if we wanted to replace that. But just for the moment what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug it in and see if we now have a working backlight since the short has been removed. Okay so I've connected back in my cable and I'm trying somehow to press the power button at the moment while the screen is sitting out. Okay so I've pressed it and we now have backlight. So the only issue with this was that shorted capacitor. Once I remove that shorted capacitor we now have a working backlight. So that concludes my video for this week. Just a short capacitor this week. I think I was due an easy fix. If you've been watching my videos for the last three months, it's been very difficult. But we got an easy one this week, so I'll take them. I'll take the easy ones whenever I can get them. Please like and subscribe, and I will be back with another repair next week.